This is for Libby. And Hazel likes a little bit more alfalfa. So we'll get her some of this. With just a little bit of this. But a little bit more of this. There we go. We've been trying to keep things tidier around here especially with dealing with rats here recently. And speaking of that, there's a trap right over here. Let's see what we have in here. Did you catch anything? Let's see here. We sure did. There's another one. Right in there. Yep. We'll take care of the goats and come back to that. Hey, Daddy, feel how smooth this egg is. Ooh, that's a pretty egg right there. <laughs> it's warm, it's like it just got laid. <laughs> the chickens are going to town, aren't they, over here, guys? Yeah! Scratching up the mulch and the compost pile here. Doing what chickens do. <laughs> All right. Hey, Hazel. What are we doing? Hey, man. Which ones are we milking first today? Hazel or Libby? Hazel. All right, let's do it. Hey, Libby. Meh. <laughs> Meh. Let's do this. It used to be when I milked Hazel before that she would just hop right up here. No matter the height didn't matter, whatever. And now she just hadn't got used to it again. So yesterday she got up here to be milked. It just takes a little time and coaxing to get her there. Isn't that right, Hazel? Yeah. Yeah. Gonna be a stubborn old lady. <laughs> Meg just hops all around, doesn't she? Yep. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Hazel. Come on. Meg does. Meg does. Come on. This is reminding me of something that Justin talked about when we were spending time with him last week. He was talking about just being patient with the animals because uh, us working with them, that's, that's like the highlight of, of their day. So they just, they just move and, and live at a different pace than we are and sometimes trying to fit them into our schedules of our, our things to do and appointments to be in. And they're just sometimes at a much different pace than we are. But sometimes goats can be pretty stubborn. Maybe you just get Libby out and milk her. You don't give her any more food and she sees what it is. Okay. Ready? Set. Go. Libby's food. Libby's food. No problem with her.
Libby here is a kicker, which is why the hobble straps really come in handy, don't they, Taylor? Yes. But she does get up really, really easy onto the milking stand. Yes, and the reason she gets up real easy is because when she was pregnant, I would, was training her to get up here because she's never been up here before. That was a good idea. That, was, that is something we definitely should do, and uh, it looks like it helped out a lot with just getting them used to getting up on the milking stand, and it had been, I guess, too long for Hazel uh, since she had been up on the milking stand, so she's just not as comfortable being on there, so she's been a little ornery about getting up on the milking stand. This girl gets, jumps up here and gets stuck every time. And then falls out normally. What are you doing? <laughs> so how long have you been milking now, Sailor? About two months now? I guess. You like doing this? Yep. <laughs> what do you like about doing it? Well, it calms you down when you're milking them. Yeah? If, if the animal is happy. <laughs> if they're not? It's stressful. <laughs> All that yummy goodness. Yep, we'll probably get almost a quart from Libby. <laughs> we have a pirate over here. What in the world? This is pirate day and I didn't know about it. Uh oh. Were we about to get robbed or something? <laughs> <laughs> Guess he's a better pirate. He didn't he didn't lose his arm and need a hook, so he's just <laughs> He has he everything in pack. <laughs> yeah, he just lost an eye. <laughs> hey, pirates, there's a chicken out. Go ahead and put that chicken up, please. <laughs> that feel good right there, Hazel. <laughs> it's crazy the way they can move their head and neck so far back sometimes. It's like, man, how do you do that? <laughs> That's her spot right there. <laughs> Does it feel that good, Hazel? Yeah. Right there. <laughs> Once you hit these shoulder blades right there. All right. Okay. You ready to get up on the stand? Yeah. I was wondering if a ramp would work. Hey, pirates. Yeah. Hey, pirates. Can you go ahead and take this inside for me? Yeah, Captain Batman. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah. All right, so I think we could try making a ramp and see if that works. Yeah. The haystack there, and let's add a, maybe a piece of wood or something to the haystack. See if we can make it more like a ramp. Yeah. Is it working out? Is that what do you mean? No, no, no. This way or the other way? Like this? He's like, what is he doing? Like that. <laughs> Hazel. Oh. I don't think that's a good idea. A I think slippery. that's a broken leg waiting to happen. Yep. Well, I'll just milk her in the stall, and because this is would be really easy for this one to break her leg or any of them to break her leg falling through and. One last try. Come on. Come on. There. It's not always glamorous, nor always stress free. <laughs> You're on the homestead. Sometimes they're definitely challenging times and you get frustrated with your animals. For sure. Just like you get stressed at people, too, right, Sam? Yes. <laughs> and, like, She's getting nursed on all the time too. So she's probably not uncomfortable being, you know, where she is nursing. So another reason animals will get up on the milk and stand is because they know that there's a relief coming. But since we're not holding the baby back, it's probably not uncomfortable for her. So she doesn't quite see that reward either. 
Let's go ahead and take her to the stall since she's more comfortable there and see if we can milk her there. Come on, Hazel. Come on, go in. Come on, Hazel. Hey. Meg's in here. Come on. So I'm just gonna walk her over here. Everything on. Listen, she wouldn't let me do this the other day, my dear. I'd like some time with a baby animal to get you in a good mood, right? Yep. Come on, she's fine. Ma! 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 Nope. Close it. No, close it. You know what? I think it's time to take Hazel and Meg outside the stall and uh, bring them over here and let them just kind of forage over here with Libby. So this will be Meg's first time out. So let's see if we can get this to work. <laughs> This is her real first time out of the stall, being able to walk around. See how Meg handles it here. <laughs> mom battle. I call it class with the mom. Cody's like, what is going on? Uh -huh. you think you gonna play with me? Libby's like, stay away from my little baby son, my little baby boy. Hazel's like, keep him away from my, my daughter. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hazel's gonna run him. <laughs> <laughs> see him stomp at him. All right, Shepherdess Sailor. <laughs> Let's leave you in here with him for a little bit. Are you okay with that? Yep. All right, so just keep watch over him and and uh, referee <laughs> any other fights to get into. <laughs> you got your rod there <laughs> to keep them in line? Yep, my shepherdess staff. <laughs> While she's outside, we'll give her a radio, so that way if she needs anything, she can just give me a buzz. Since the fence is on. Here you go, Sailor. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna turn on the fence. Just keep in mind, Meg has not been trained to the fence yet, so we're gonna have to work with her on learning that the fence gives a shot. Yep. All right, so you got it? So little Meg here has, has not touched the fence yet. And um, that's good and bad. Bad because this first time, I really want them to touch the fence so that way they learn that it shocks. Oh, she might get it right now. False alarm. So it's really important that they touch the fence, they learn to get trained by the fence, to know that the fence is gonna shock them when they touch it. So that way they stay in here. It's for their benefit, it's to, 
to keep them in and safe and the predators out. So if they're just constantly getting out, they're not contained and they're not safe and they're not where we want them to be. And uh, that's not good. Little Cody over there, I can still remember when we were training him for the first time not too long ago and learning that the fence will shock you. He got shocked there. <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> it's learning, learning. It's, it's not been mean in the shock. It's enough, it, it's, it's not gonna cause you any like really pain or it's hurting you, but it definitely lets you know. We've been shocked bo by it before, haven't we, Sailor? <laughs> uh, yes, we have. As I'm hanging out in here with the goats, I'm noticing that uh, there's some pruning that needs to be done in here. Just got a lot of just scraggly stuff that's making it hard to move. I know some of it growing will be great for the goats to come in and just, just browse on, but uh, some of it needs to go just to clear it up and make it so that way other things can grow. And, and I'm also noticing not gonna do it today, but I'm noticing that this tree is broken off here, so that's a danger for falling on somebody and hitting them in the head. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get to that really soon. But all this right in here, I need to clean it up just a little bit. Hey, Sayla, can you bring me over the pruners? I want to trim in here just a little bit. Yes, sir. Thank you. Here we go. Thanks. So I still haven't seen Meg touch the fence yet. I haven't been able to get her to touch the fence. She's not quite as venturous as Cody is, so she's doing a good job of just staying away from it, but I do want her to experience it. When you were over here, you didn't notice her getting touched by the fence, did you? Good shot. She only touched it when it was off. Okay. It was already low. I'm gonna cut out some of these along the fence just because they reduce the shock of the fence and we don't want that. But uh, some of the other ones just more in the main area, we're gonna leave those because the goats like to chew on them and even just do some weird stuff with them, just playing with them, I'm doing what goats do. But stuff like this we'll leave for now because they'll get leaves on them and the goats will eat off of them. And uh, whatever they eat of the stems, we'll let it be. But if it starts getting to the point where they're growing and developing more, we're gonna get rid of them because we don't want them crowding out the growth of the trees and the plants that we do want to keep in here. And uh, speaking of that, let me show you something else. One of the things that I learned, and I believe it was from Jeff Lawton, the permaculture guy down in Australia, is when you're in your different grazing section for your goats, you can basically cut down a tree and then it will regrow branches that will shoot off like this and it will be all kind of leaves grown on here that will provide nice vegetation for the goats to eat on. So we're trying to do that more and more in different areas like in some of our grazing paddocks that we're developing down through the woods there. We've cut some trees down and we're hoping that it will still, that growth, new growth will shoot up, leaves will come on there and then when we bring the goats onto it they'll have some things to browse and, and munch and <laughs> crunch on because generally goats prefer not to be down really low. They like to be up higher, preferably above the knee level and uh, we're going to we try to provide more and more things for them to eat on here especially with our property being mostly wooded we do, have, we do have a lot of that for them to to eat on as they're helping us to clean and maintain the property there she goes doing that weird thing again <laughs> it's kind of funny but weird at the same time isn't it <laughs> yeah. She's just hanging out in your lap over there. Yep. They were doing that to me too. But Cody actually jumped in my lap and kicked me in the groin and that didn't feel good. So don't let him do that to you. <laughs> well, it's up to you how long you want to stay in here. I don't think they need to be policed anymore. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. Okay, I'll stay in here a little longer. All right, continue on with your stress therapy right there. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, you remember the rat that we trapped earlier? Somehow, it escaped. So these traps have been working out really well for catching some of these big rats that we've had around here. But I guess we have some small ones too. So I'm gonna need to order some rat and mouse traps to catch some more. We'll probably have some mice around here too, so we can just start getting rid of some of those guys because we wanna get rid of those vermin around here. Ah, there's been so many of them, so we're just gonna get rid of them. Well, the goats, the little goats have been hanging out and Meg adjusting to being out for the first time. And we've been doing various things around the homestead and Josiah was helping me out. We're putting together the shelves here as we gradually get into spring cleaning time of year and organizing various things around here. And all this time, Meg has been doing quite the job of avoiding getting shocked by the fence. So we're like, ah oh, man, will she ever get shocked? And then finally, she got shocked. She was like, what the world happened to me? Just take her near the fence to see if she does anything to it now. Down on the ground. Did they protect me? And that was pretty rough for her too. She actually got tangled up in the fence and we had to pull her out. We unplugged the first fence and then pulled her out. Thankfully we were right there and she had that experience. But she has been staying really, really clear of the fence ever since being shot. So she definitely got the shocking message that the fence is hot. Stay away from it. Well, speaking of goats, I think it's now the time to bring them back in. And that's about a wrap. And tomorrow, it'll be time to do it again. See you next time.